Hi there, welcome back to the Schwoben's Nest. If you're new, my name is Sandra. Thanks for joining me today. This video is in collaboration with Heidi Sonbold DIY. She put out a challenge for us to do some farmhouse DIYs. I'll have Heidi's channel and the playlist link down in my description box. Please make sure to go check them out. My first project is going to be doing something with this garden stake windmill that I picked up a while ago at my local Dollarama. I also have these garden stakes. I've always grabbed quite a few of them, so I have them on hand when I need them. I'm going to be using three all together for this project. I'm starting off just by painting all of them with black acrylic paint. I'm trying to use up all of the stuff that I have at home because I don't want to have to go out and get anything because I want to stay home. So I've got a whole stash of different craft paints and so I just decided that since this is going to be an indoor project, the acrylic paint will work just fine. While I was waiting for the sticks to dry, I took this windmill outside and gave it one coat of a black hammered metal finish. And I really like how it turned out. When you see it close up, you can still see some of the colors coming through. Then I decided to add a coat of the silver hammered metal finish on top of the black. This project was constantly evolving as I was doing it. So at first I thought I was gonna leave these stakes black, but then I decided to take some silver acrylic paint and do my dry brush technique on top of the black just to make it look more like the windmill. Using a black acrylic paint, just dry brushing, I'm doing a little bit on the windmill itself. I want it to kind of have more of a rustic look too. You can see some of the black hammered metal coming through, but I just wanted to give it a little bit more dimension. I took apart the windmill because I didn't need the stake part of it. And so this little knob just kind of popped off because it was actually screwed right into the stake. So I'm just hot gluing it back in place. So for one of the stakes, I'm gonna be cutting three pieces out of it. I'm going to make one fairly long, probably about a good 12 to 13 inches. And then I'm going to do two others that are about two inches less than that. So one 13 inches, one about 11 inches, and then one about nine inches. And I'm just using my little miter box and my little hacksaw. As you can see here, I'm not really doing any precise measurements. I'm just eyeballing some sizes because it doesn't really matter how long these are. As I was playing around with how I'm going to put this together, I realized that gluing the windmill right to the stakes wasn't gonna work. So I found this little craft block that I have in my stash. It had already been painted white for a different project and didn't get used. So I'm just painting it black so it blends in. Here comes the fun part, assembling all of this together. I'm using hot glue just at the very tip and I'm going to just press these two angled pieces together. This is how these garden stakes come. So normally you would use this pointed part to stick in the ground, but I'm gonna use that as my top angle. Next, I'm going to glue the cross pieces right on top of the large stakes and you saw that I pulled out my windmill and just wanted to kind of gauge where I want everything to be. And again, I am just eyeballing the spacing in between. I'm not making anything too specific on this project. Here's the little block that I needed to glue on at the top. And now I'm just going to use some hot glue and glue down the windmill. This is how it turned out. I think it's pretty sweet. The 
the second project today is this large wooden bin that I've had for a long time. I picked it up for a specific reason. It was $4.99 at the thrift store and you can kind of tell that it was probably either a craft made project or a homemade project. It's got those old country hearts on the side. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep those or try to do something different. I've cleaned it all up and now I'm going to use chalked linen white paint and put that all over and I'm probably going to need to do at least two coats to cover up this varnish. I'm using my go-to linen white Rust-Oleum chalk paint and my Bennett large chalk paint brush because that's going to just help me cover the surface really quickly. I won't be painting down to the bottom of the inside of this box because I'm going to try and find a garbage bin, a plastic garbage bin that will fit nicely in there. This is going to replace the plastic bin that I'm using right now in my kitchen as a recycle bin and I don't like that. It's under my sink. I had it out for a while, but I wanted to have something that wouldn't take up space under my sink because I need that space for other items. So I decided to find something that would work as a recycle bin. And I think this is gonna turn out pretty cool once I'm done with it. As I was waiting for the first coat to dry, I was trying to figure out what I could do with those handles. In the end, I decided to just cut them off. So I just took the box outside and used my little hacksaw to cut them off. I want to add a stencil and some prettiness to this. So a little bit farmhouse style. I'm putting down a piece of painter's tape just to line up the words recycle that I'll be stenciling on. These stencils are somewhat of a farmhouse font and I'm just laying it out to make sure that I start at the right spot. Then I'm going to just take each individual letter, use some painter's tape to hold it down and then stencil. For stenciling, I like to use a dark gray on the white. I used to really like black, but I'm really enjoying the gray in more of a farmhouse style. So I'm using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in country gray and the brush I'm using isn't a stencil brush but it is just a cheaper brush that came in a set from the dollar store. I just find that I'm getting better results with this brush, specifically when I'm using it for smaller stencils. Nothing says farmhouse more than a laurel leaf stencil. So I'm going to use this one at the top of the word recycle and then at the bottom of it as well. And I decided to use my sage green acrylic paint just to give this a little bit extra color. I did switch over to the stencil brush that was from the Dollar Tree just because the laurel leaves are a bigger stencil and it's easier to get in with this stiffer brush than the soft brush. I just repeated the same process for the stencil underneath the word recycle. I really liked how this is turning out, but I wanted my letters to have a little bit more dimension. Right now they look really flat. I wanted them to look more 3D. So I'm using a little brush and I'm following along a stencil that I had done on a previous project, which is up here in the corner. 
So these letters actually have a little bit of a frame around them. So I'm going to be following that pattern and duplicating it on these letters. I'm going to use two distressing techniques on this project. The first is using a 150 grit sandpaper and sanding off some of the paint around the corners and the edges to reveal some of the brown wood underneath. The second way I'm going to distress this is to dry brush some of the country gray across the white. It looks too stark white for me. So I just wanted to kind of give it more of a, a distressed farmhouse country look. Here's how the finished project turned out. I'd like to thank Heidi for hosting this challenge. It was a lot of fun. If you enjoyed my video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click the bell to get notified when I upload new content. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.